The 52 Hertz Whale, also known simply as 52 Blue, has been labeled the world's loneliest whale. The story of 52 Blue begins in 1989, when multiple hydrophones built and put in place by the United States Navy meant to detect enemy submarines picked up an unfamiliar signal. It was clear that they were whale songs, and while they were similar to that of a blue whale, there was something distinctively different than anything they had heard before. While most whales vocalize and communicate at a frequency ranging between 10 and 30 hertz, this one very peculiar whale, 52 Blue, called out at the unusual frequency of 52 hertz. This can be heard in the following recording. Now, to the human ear, this sounds simply like a somewhat deep bass note, but not to a blue whale. This call is quite notably higher than their own. This is clear when we hear and compare it next to the call of a blue whale. Despite the two calls being audibly very different, 52 Blue's distinctively different frequency actually made him easy to track and based on his tracked migratory behavior as well as the timing of his seasonal callings, it has been strongly suggested that 52 Blue very likely is a blue whale, but that he simply can't call out at the frequency of his fellow whales. Though he has never been physically seen, his lone mating calls have been heard echoing throughout the waters of the Pacific Ocean for years. Through singing his unique song at 52 Hz, 52 Blue sings out a frequency that other whales may very well be able to hear but simply can't recognize. Thus, he wanders the vast cold ocean waters alone, calling out desperately for a companion but without ever getting back a response. Whales are very social creatures, this is known, and the fact that 52 Blue is not being heard or responded to is deeply saddening. Alone on a planet light years from home, this is Curiosity. An incredible accomplishment in interstellar exploration, Curiosity is the largest and most capable rover to ever reach Mars. First launching from Earth on November 26th of 2011, it took a remarkable journey of just over 8 months of traveling for Curiosity to reach the Red Planet. It officially landed on Mars on August 5th of 2012 and was only then considered to be born on that day. It took little time for Curiosity to get to work, keeping busy taking shadow selfies, getting to shoot laser beams at rocks and exploring the vast lands of Mars, gathering samples and photos all at the heart pounding speed of 5 centimeters per second. While Curiosity has been incredibly valuable to our understanding of Mars, there is no denying Curiosity is about as lonely as it gets. After the first year of being on Mars, NASA decided to commemorate his turning of age by having Curiosity hum himself a little song. Though there was no one on Mars to hear it, this is what NASA says it sounded like. Although the robot turned an exciting 5 years old this year, this year its birthday went unheard on Mars, as that first year where Curiosity got to sing himself happy birthday was also the last. NASA hasn't let Curiosity sing to himself since 2012. It is undoubtedly the loneliest robot in our universe, but at the end of the day, it is just a robot. Should we really get so attached to an object that is no more than just a tool for spatial exploration? I'm not sure, but what is well known is that hearing about the robot's remote loneliness has sparked a deep feeling inside millions across the world, and it is somehow sad. Thinking about little curiosity, watching the Earth setting over the horizon of Mars, knowing that it will never make the 208 million mile trek back home to Earth, only further enforces this. If there is a silver lining though, it is knowing that one day, in what is looking to be ever more soon, humans will reach Mars, and little curiosity will finally be met with company. In most of our lives, it is often easy to take a simple tree for granted. 
being how abundant they can often seem to be. But here, in the harsh climate of the Sahara Desert, trees can quickly become a much rarer commodity. This is very much the case with the Teneri tree of Niger. This sole tree was the only tree for what was a 250 mile radius. Its rarity in the vast desert land made it one of the most important landmarks of central Niger for much of the 20th century and could actually be found marked on almost any national map. Interestingly though, this desert wasn't always what it is today and the tree was actually part of what was thousands of years ago a forest. However, as the region grew ever more dry and hot over time, those trees all died off hundreds of years ago but not the Teneri tree. This one tree stood strong, even thrived completely alone for over 300 years, despite the fact that the Teneri region today is known as one of the most inhospitable areas in the world. In this region of the world, there's little to no vegetation at all, and understandably so, with an annual average rainfall of just two to three centimeters a year. So then, how did this lonesome tree flourish the way that it did? A well dug in 1938 revealed that the roots of this tree had worked their way into the sand an astonishing 100 feet to reach water. This well then gave the tree a steady source of water and nourishment and gave it the ability to truly thrive in the desert. None of its branches were ever damaged or cut by locals and camels in the region were never allowed to eat its leaves as the Tuareg nomads saw the tree as being sacred, often even using the site for traditional ceremonies. But sadly, this lonesome tree's proud stand against time came to an abrupt end when a drunk driver almost unbelievably managed to crash into the only obstacle in this vast desert for hundreds of miles. The dried out trunk that once was the proud Teneri tree has now found a new home in the Niger National Museum. As the tree was used as a landmark, it has since been replaced with a metal sculpture taking its place in the desert. Somewhere deep within the Amazon forest is a tribe made up of only one remaining member. A single man referred to as the most isolated man on the planet, the lone Brazilian. The way this man has survived for decades is simply incredible, but he is undoubtedly extremely lonely. Officials have known of the man for over 20 years, first hearing about him in 1996 when rumors began of a wild man who had been spotted by loggers. Attempting to then find him, one of his small homes was found and there was a mysterious hole dug in the center nearly 5 feet deep. A further search revealed multiple homes and even finding tools left behind by the man. It was soon realized that the man was on the run, abandoning his homes daily, moving from shelter to shelter and leaving at the sight of researchers. This would prove to make actually encountering the man extremely difficult and it took countless attempts before he was finally found. This then began a pattern of tense standoffs with the man, described as being unclothed, always armed and always ready for confrontation, even shooting one agent in the chest. His name, his story and who he was remained a mystery. It wasn't long though before Boldo's ruins of a small village were discovered, with homes built the exact same way that this mysterious man built his, always with a 5 foot hole in the center. It was believed that his tribe had been killed off by illegal loggers and his village destroyed in early 1996. Since that time he has been tracked for nearly 20 years in an attempt to ensure that he remains safe from loggers. This video from 2009 shows absolutely shocking footage of the man. While unbeknownst to the man, he has been granted 31 square miles of land that belongs solely to him and that loggers are not legally allowed to touch. He has been able to grow crops around his small huts such as corn and eats a diet that mainly consists of wild game caught with traps or hunted by bow and arrow. Indigenous experts believe that he has continued to maintain a spiritual life rooted in the beliefs of his former tribe. He is the last person in the world to retain the customs and traditions of his people. The lone Brazilian wanders the extremely vast forest of the Amazon rainforest. The absolute loneliness and fear that this man must live every day is unquestionable. This is Lonesome George. 
a Penta Island subspecies of Galapagos giant tortoise. Though this subspecies was thought to have been extinct in the early part of the 20th century, a Hungarian scientist surveying the area nearly 70 years later in 1971 came across an incredible discovery while on the island. A giant tortoise that just so happened to be Lonesome George. As it was thought that this subspecies had already been extinct for years, it was a shocking discovery. He clearly was the last of his kind and was taken to the tortoise center on Santa Cruz Island in hopes that over time a female pinta tortoise may be discovered as well, giving George a mating partner and potentially saving this subspecies entirely. For years, he was known as one of the rarest creatures on our planet and quickly became a conservation icon. Scientists made numerous attempts in finding a mate for George, even if it meant mating with another species of tortoise just to keep his species alive. The Ecuadorian government even offered a reward of $10,000 for the discovery of a female tortoise that would be suitable to mate with George, but unfortunately, all attempts wound up falling short. But then, completely unexpectedly, George mated with one of two tortoise companions in his space. This was extremely exciting, and the eggs were collected and incubated at the anticipation of one day hatching. But sadly, they all wound up failing to hatch. George really was alone, the last of his kind, and despite extensive efforts, George never was able to bear any offspring. He lived an isolated existence, and unfortunately, after what was estimated to be over 100 years of being all alone, on June 24th of 2012, Lonesome George was found dead by his caretaker of 40 years. His death marked the end of his kind, and ultimately wiped out the entire species of Pinta Island's giant tortoise as we know it.